Welcome to our lecture online. Our next example is a very interesting example. What we're going to try to do is find the surface area of a sphere. Now, of course, we already know what that is, so it's interesting because we can check the answer to see if we did it correctly. But the approach we're going to take is we're going to use what we call the surface revolution method. We're going to just do the top half of the sphere. Notice we have a small little segment along the edge of the sphere, which is defined by the equation x squared plus y squared equals 5 squared, essentially the equation of a circle. Notice we take that small little dl, that small little arc length, and we're going to revolve it around the y-axis. The radius of that is going to equal x, which is going to change from, of course, over here x goes to 0, and here x goes to the full radius of the circle, which is equal to 5. So notice that we have the equation x squared plus y squared equals 25, or y squared equals 25 minus x squared. You take the square root of both sides. You only take the positive part of that because we want the top half. And so we write y equals the square root of 25 minus x squared. Or you can, of course, write it like this. Then we take the derivative of that, which is 1 half times the square root of the minus 1 half, times the derivative of what's inside, which is minus 2x, and simplified, this is going to be our derivative of our function. And then when we square it, we get x squared divided by 25 minus x squared. And that will then be substituted in here, which is the general approach on how we find the surface area using the surface of revolution method. Notice it's 2 pi times the radius. The radius in this case is going to be x times the quantity right here, which is how we find the arc length. That's going to give us the arc length of that. So that's equal to the square root of 1 plus the, the derivative of the function squared times dx. All right, let's plug everything in that we know. And so area is going to be equal to 2 times 2 pi. Now, why is it 2 times 2 pi? Is because when we use this method, we only get the top half of the sphere. We want the full sphere, and so we have to multiply times 2 times the integral from x equals 0 to x equals 5, these are x limits, times x times the square root of 1 plus the derivative squared, which is x squared, divided by 25 minus x squared, the whole thing times dx. So at first when you look at that, you go, well, I don't know how to integrate that, but there's a way around it. What we want to do is write all this over the common denominator. So we have the area is equal to 4 pi times the integral from 0 to 5 of x times the square root of 25 minus x squared over 25 minus x squared and then plus x squared times dx. And notice 1 is the same as 25 minus x squared over 25 minus x squared. But notice now in the numerator, we can get rid of that x squared because this cancels out that. So we end up with the area equals 4 pi integrated from 0 to 5 of x times the square root of 25 over 25 minus x squared times dx. Hmm. So, uh, first of all, what we can do is we can factor out a 25, or the square root of 25, put that up front, and of course the square root of 25 is 5, so we have the area is equal to 4 pi times the square root of 25, or 5, integral 0 to 5 of x times the square root of 1 over 25 minus x squared times dx. So, at first, again, it looks like we're kind of at a dead end. But then, if you think about it right, you can rewrite this in a different way. You can say, well, this is equal to, this becomes 20 pi times the integral from 0 to 5. And we can write this as the quantity 25 minus x squared to the minus 1 half power times x dx. Notice that this is essentially, the square root of 1 is 1, so we could write it as the square root of uh, 1 over the square root of 25 minus x squared, which can also be written as a negative exponent. So now that's the key, because now you can see that if this is our u, if this here is our u, then the property u would be a minus 
2x dx. We already have an x dx, so we need a minus 2 here. And of course, when we multiply times a minus 2, we need to divide by minus 2. So here, divide by minus 2, and then this part right here becomes our du. And now we're ready to integrate it. So the area becomes equal to, that's a minus 10 pi. Now the next thing here is you get this minus here, you begin to worry, because you can't have negative areas. But don't worry, things will work out. Uh, next, we're going to integrate that. So we have this becomes 25 minus x squared to the positive 1 half power divided by 1 half and then evaluate it from 0 to 5. Divide by the half is the same as multiplying times 2. So this becomes equal to minus 20 pi times. When we plug in the upper limit, Notice 5 squared, subtract from 25, that's 25 minus 25, that goes to 0. Minus, and then you go, all right, there's my sigh of relief because this minus will cancel out that minus. When we plug in 0, we get uh, 25 to the 1 half power, which is 5, so minus 5, like this. And of course, minus 5 times minus 20, that's equal to 100 times pi. And that's then the area. So we say that area is equal to 100 pi. And that's then for the full circle because we multiply times 2 because this would only give you the upper half, so times 2 gives you both upper and lower half. Now to check, of course, we know that the area is equal to 4 pi r squared. That's the surface area of a sphere. In this case, the, in this case, the radius is 5, so a equals 4 pi times 5 squared, which is 25 times 4, and you can see, sure enough, we get the very same answer for the surface area of a sphere. And there it is. That's the method. Again, what we could have done, perhaps, is if we could have revolved it around the x-axis instead of around the y-axis. Again, you probably would get the very same answer. Not just probably, if you don't make any mistakes, you would get the same answer regardless if you revolve it around the y-axis or revolve it around the x-axis. So, that is how it's done. No, we're not going to revolve it around the x-axis. Again, that's an exercise for the student to do. To gain confidence.